How's it going, guys? It is 12.28 a.m., 6th of March, Monday. Here in Japan, we have a past level question for renal histo for step one. Actually, I should say medium difficulty. Okay, I'll give some leniency there. A nearly identical question shows up one of the NBME exams. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel are down below, and I start the clip. 49-year-old man with severe rheumatoid arthritis managed with gold salts comes to the physician for a two-week history of peripheral edema. He immigrated to the USA from India one month ago. Your analysis shows four plus protein and one to two RBCs prior powered field, which means negative. Okay, you can have three to four RBCs prior powered field. That's also negative. I've seen that on surgery forms for 2CK, uh, which the following is most likely diagnosis. And then we have this image here okay you say no idea what the fuck i'm looking at and i'll talk about it as we move through the question choice so what's the diagnosis let's look at the answers here choice a alport syndrome wrong fucking answer you don't need to know any histo for this this is an x-linked recessive disorder on nvme 18 or 19 offline uh there's a stem where they say x-linked recessive in the stem okay some students some students have asked whether it's xd xr literature will say different things the nvme sex says xr in that old form but this is a mutation type 4 collagen. This is going to be the answer. When you have red urine in a male, can be kid or adult, with an eye or an ear problem. Okay, so type 4 collagen you need in the eye and the ear. So they'll just say, like, 20, uh, the question they made me exam is 28-year-old dude who has hematuria, who has blurry vision. And the answer is just collagen 4, okay, mutation. Don't confuse with good pasture syndrome, which is antibodies against collagen for hematurian hemoptysis in a male 20s to 40s. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, IJ nephropathy, wrong answer. This is going to be red urine one to three days after a viral infection, okay? So what you need to, almost always, so what you need to know. If they give you a 12-year-old boy sore throat, red urine one to three days later, answer IJ nephropathy. If they give you 12-year-old boy, sore throat, red urine, one to three weeks later, weeks, that's PSGN, post-treptococcal glomerulonephritis, not IJ nephropathy, okay? IJ nephropathy, I said most of the time, viral infection, sore throat. It can sometimes be GI, all right? When you do 2CK pediatrics, it's part of the Henoxiolni and Purpura constellation. It's a tetrad of number one, palpal purpura, buttox thighs, number two, red urine, IJ nephropathy, number three, arthralgias, number four, abdominal pain. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, interstitial nephritis. Wrong answer, aka interstitial nephropathy, aka tubulo interstitial nephritis nephropathy. This is going to be an NSAID beta lactam or cephalosporin causing white blood cells, which are eosinophils in the urine. Okay, they'll say that four out of five questions. And maculopapular rash only in about 50% of questions. One out of five questions will say NSAID beta lactam cephalosporin with just mild proteinuria and hematuria, that's it. They don't mention anything about eosinophils, white blood cells. Okay, it's a very important diagnosis. You need to know beta lactams and say sulfosporins do not cause acute tubular necrosis. They cause interstitial nephritis. They can also say patients been on NSAIDs for EG six weeks and proxen and has peripheral edema. That can also be how interstitial nephritis shows up. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, membrane proliferative gland nephritis. Wrong fucking answer. This refers to red urine in a patient who has hepatitis C. That's it, okay? They can say uh, malignancy rarely, but it's usually just, they'll give you a big rambling 15 line paragraph, patient has hep C. Uh, they'll say there's acanthocytes seen, which will distract you. Those just mean liver failure. Uh, almost always, abelic proteinemia sometimes, usually just liver failure. And they'll say, uh, what's the next best step in diagnosis? The answer is renal biopsy. The student has no idea what's going on. It's just membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. Descriptors such as C3 nephritic fractor, uh, duplication of basement membrane, dense deposits, all absolute garbage. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see membranous glomerulonephropathy? Correct answer. So you need to know that gold salts... Dapsone and sulfonamides are the classic agents that precipitate membranous. Okay, I've made many clips on this. Now, this histo image, you might say, well, this is really difficult. What is this? This is supposed to be thickening of the glomerular capillaries. Okay, a nearly identical image shows up on one of the NBME exams. All right, so this is a buzzy image. 
they don't care about most histo. Like you don't need to know histo for Alport or IJ nephropathy, or you don't need to know any of that stuff, PSGN, but they like this image for membranous. Okay. Membranous glomerulonephritis uh, is a nephrotic syndrome. So when we talk about basic nephritic versus nephrotic, nephritic being blood in the urine, nephrotic, no blood in the urine. Okay. So Alport is blood in the urine, nephritic, IG nephropathy, nephritic. You can eliminate those right away. Membranal proliferative nephritis, nephritic. Okay, so membranous is nephrotic. Uh, membranous nephrotic syndrome can also be caused by tumors, breast cancer, pancreatic cancer. Uh, it can be hepatitis B. It can be primary antibodies against phospholipase A2 receptor. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.